أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ورسلا قد قصصناهم عليك من قبل ورسلا لم نقصصهم عليك Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and the unique. It is He who revealed the Quran and taught Adam how to speak. It is He that we worship and it is His blessings that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed and He answers the dua of the weak. So inshallah ta'ala we are continuing in our uh, discussion of the creation of our father Adam alayhi salam in light of the Quran and Sunnah. And in my last lecture, I went into some detail with regards to the tradition uh, of uh, uh, that is mentioned in a number of books of hadith uh, that Adam uh, alayhi salam was 60 cubits tall uh, and that the creation has continue to diminish in size. And I went over a number of interpretations. Uh, and again, to summarize, so this is a very uh, sensitive issue because uh, this is uh, one of the areas where uh, those who affirm the sunnah and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they're very cautious about uh, trying to rationalize uh, a hadith. And there's no doubt that this is a gray area over here. The default position of the majority of scholars of hadith is that if the chain is authentic, then we really minimally question the metan or the uh, the content of the hadith. However, throughout the course of our history, there have always been voices within our Ahlul Sunnah or Sunni tradition, scholars of hadith, because see, the point is that if we open this door, it does become a Pandora's box that, well, what if uh, you know this group doesn't like any hadith that affirms Qadr? So the Mu'tazila, for example, de denied every hadith that uh, talks about uh, Qadr. And they said, we don't want to accept any hadith that affirms predestination because it went against their mind. So we don't want to go down this route. At the same time, does this mean that we completely ignore uh, facts when it comes to a potentially, a potentially uh, problematic uh, narration? What if there was a human error? And so we opened this door. And as I explained that with regards to this hadith, a number of scholars uh, of our past, and I went over their names, uh, they did try to either interpret this phrase or even claim that this that phrase of the creation has continued to diminish, that it was mistakenly attributed uh, in the hadith and in fact it goes back to the Israeliyat or the uh, narrations of the people of the book. So I went over this and of course that is an interpretation if you feel that uh, you know, that interpretation is not something you're, uh, you're content with and feel free to follow uh, other interpretations as well. And there are a number, so alhamdulillah, uh, this issue has been uh, uh, given a number of interpretations. I personally, as I said, lean towards the fact that that phrase uh, can be understood, that the creation has remained diminished in size. And that when in the afterlife, we shall be recreated in a different form. And that is a different life. As Allah says, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ On that day, the heavens and the earth are going to be a different heavens and earth. So totally different dynamics, totally different paradigm. So in that creation, in the afterlife, we shall revert to the original creation of our father, Adam alayhi salam. And that makes uh, to me a uh, complete sense. And it is in conformity with the wordings of the hadith. It's not uh, too much of a stretch. So the hadith remains authentic. And we simply say like a number of scholars said that the phrase uh, that the creation has remained diminished in size, uh, it should be translated the way that I just translated it. Also, by the way, a number of people uh, commented uh, about uh, the existence of uh, the people of Ad as giants and whatnot. Not. And uh, also uh, in the story of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, that uh, uh, the uh, Amalekites are mentioned as being giants. So uh, these references uh, simply means that they were of a larger stature than normal, not actual giants in the sense of a hundred foot high. As we're aware, certain civilizations, uh, uh, in, uh, naturally speaking, are taller than others. We have the you know pygmies, for example, of uh, certain areas of, of Africa, and then we have the uh, Masai of certain areas of. Africa. So one of these tribes is almost seven foot. The default amongst them is six and a half to seven feet. And then the other tribe, the default is like, you know, four feet or whatnot. So this is within the norm of normal range of human beings. And so there are races 
There are certain uh, peoples that, and even for example, in certain Nordic countries versus certain Far Eastern countries, there is a height difference, that is an average height difference. This is within the realm of uh, normative uh, heights. As I have said uh, that we are not aware, and I know a lot of people think that there's photographic evidence or think that there's cover-ups and hiding evidences. I mean, that's uh, uh, a position that some people have taken. Uh, I, I don't agree that there's been a cover-up and the giants have been discovered. There have not, there has no, there has been no discovery of any such uh, giants. And the point is that the hadith doesn't need to be interpreted in that way in the first place. Once again, with my utmost love and respect, we have people who read in more than what the hadith says. Then when uh, somebody comes along and says, hey, that doesn't make sense, they feel as if the hadith is being rejected and it's not being rejected. We are sensible people of intelligence and we take facts into account and we affirm that whatever Allah and His Messenger say is true. But we also ask, did they actually say this? Is it an authentic hadith? And if they said it, what is the meaning? Is it in accordance with what you are thinking or are there other interpretations? So this is really the, the, the key point and the difference between uh, those who affirm the sunnah versus those who reject the sunnah. Now, today's lecture is actually going to be in a similar vein because we're now gonna go to another uh, set of evidences that has generated, once again, a lot of discussion. And again, uh, as I have said many times that uh, my lecture series here is not basic. It is meant to be a little bit more in depth. And perhaps for many of you, you are being introduced to concepts and ideas that uh, you were not aware of. And so it is natural to doubt, to be skeptical, but I am always referencing every fact that I say, quoting scholars far greater than myself, so that you are aware, just because because you are hearing it for the first time doesn't mean I'm inventing it, right? So my research is original, but whenever I quote something, uh, if there is a precedence, I will say it. And if it is from me, I will also say it and it's up to you to take it or to leave it. So today's lecture is actually going to be a summary of a very contentious issue from the beginning of time. This has been debated and many treatises and, and paragraphs have been written about this issue because it deals with the hadith that once again has generated a lot of discussion and yes even controversy and that is the hadith that I briefly referenced in our last lecture and I'm going to continue today and that is the hadith same hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu an that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said خلق الله آدم على صورته طوله ستون ذراع that Allah created Adam in his image and he was 60 cubits uh, tall and that the hadith goes on now in the last lecture I went over 60 cubits I went over the creation diminishing but I said the phrase Allah created Adam in his image. I said, I'll talk about that later. This is now that later. We're gonna talk about that issue. Allah created Adam in his image. And uh, this hadith is reported by Abu Hurairah radiallahu an. And in another version of Abu Hurairah's uh, narration, the, uh, the Abu Hurairah said that the Prophet sallallahu said that if one of you is fighting uh, your brother, if you are fighting your brother, then فَلْيَجْتَنِبِ الْوَجْهِ to Avoid uh, hitting him uh, in the face فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ خَلَقَ آدَمْ عَلَى صُورَتِهِ Because Allah created Adam in his image. Now, the meaning here is that if there is a legitimate fight, sometimes there's an actual legitimate fight, self-defense, something going on, that something is going on, uh, that uh, you, you are actually fighting somebody uh, for a, a, a purpose that uh, might be legitimate. Generally speaking, you should not be fighting, but sometimes something happens, somebody is you know, pushing you and you push back or whatnot, you know, and it's not good to do that, but it is allowed to do that. Our Prophet ﷺ said, if you are going to do that, then do not uh, hit the face area. Do not hit the face area because Allah Azza wa Jal created Adam in his image. Okay? فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ خَلَقَ Adam عَلَىٰ صُورَتِهِ Now, obviously this phrase has generated a lot of discussion and yes, even controversy. And that is because what exactly does it mean? Allah created man in his image. Allah created Adam in his image. And of course, this notion of Allah creating man in his image is something that is clearly also biblical. By the way, just because it is biblical doesn't mean it's un-Islamic. It could be that uh, the both of them originated from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just because something is found in the Bible in the Old or New Testament doesn't necessarily negate it. At the same time, it gives us some pause and thought and say, okay, hold on a sec, what's going on over here? So in in Genesis um, chapter 1 verses 26 to 27, uh, in the translation of the Bible uh, of the Old Testament. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. 
in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So God created man in his own image. It is almost the same verbatim to verbatim. Now, the question is that, uh, what is the interpretation of this uh, phrase? And of course, this notion of uh, Allah creating Adam in his image, uh, it is something that uh, all theological schools have discussed and interpreted in their own different ways. Because the notion of Allah's attributes, uh, for those of you that are aware of anything to do with Islamic theology, you know that the most contentious issue of our uh, history when it comes to theology, the most debated issue, the central core of the debates of Islamic theology uh, revolve around the concept of Allah's attributes. This is what the majority of earlier books uh, talk about. How do we understand those attributes that are somewhat humanistic or the technical term anthropomorphic? So when Allah says that he has a hand or two hands, uh, when the Prophet said, your Lord is not one eyed, when the Quran says, your Lord has risen over the throne, when the Quran uh, mentions that uh, so many other uh, 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 verses, the, the Prophet talks about Allah coming down uh, every third of the night, the last of the night, and the Quran mentions وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ Your Lord shall come. So these are all uh, adjectives and verbs and adverbs that are being used to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it generated controversy since the second generation, not amongst the Sahaba. Amongst the Sahaba, it was too early, they were not talking about this issue at all. However, uh, when Muslims came into uh, two um, uh, Roman lands and Christians were talking about this issue, so they also absorbed it. I have a more, much more technical talk, uh, which you can find on my YouTube channel. It is called uh, the Sifat Controversy in Early Islam. Uh, Sifat is the attribute. So if you really want to know some advanced stuff, and that's a very technical talk about where this uh, originated, you can go listen to that uh, talk. For our purposes, we need to understand that different theological schools came into existence with regards to how we should understand these attributes. And there are, for the purposes of our lecture, let's say uh, three primary philosophies, if you like. You have the Mu'tazila, and then you have the Sunni groups of Kalam, like the Ash'ar and Maturidiya, and then you have the Athari or the Salafi school. So these are the three main trends that historically are represented uh, in the Ummah. And as for the Mu'tazila, uh, they are non-Sunnis, and what this means is that they're not really concerned about the books of Hadith. That's really the main difference between uh, us and them, is that for them, uh, and this is why, uh, for them, if the Hadith doesn't make sense, then it's not authentic. If the hadith does not make sense, we'll just reject the hadith, the Prophet did not say it. So for them, they're not that concerned with isnad analysis. So Al-Qadi Abdul Jabbar, who is their main theologian, died 400 something, 430 something Hijri. Al-Qadi Abdul Jabbar is their main uh, uh, figure who wrote many, many books about uh, theology, many volumes he wrote about Mu'tazili theology. He mentions the hadith that we just talked about. Allah created Adam in his image. And he comments, هَذِهِ الْأَخْبَارِ لَا يَجُوزُ التَّصْدِيقُ بِهَا إِذْ كَانَتْ مُخَالِفَةً لِلْأَدِلَّةِ الْقَاطِعَةِ These types of narrations, it is impossible, is not allowed for us to believe in them. لَا يَجُوزُ We are not allowed to believe in them. In other words, he is saying, the Prophet ﷺ could never have said this. Why? because it contradicts evidences that are clear cut that Allah is unique, that Allah is laysa kamithlihi shay, that Allah is not like any entity or human being. And now we come across this hadith that says that Allah created man in his image. So uh, the Mu'tazili philosophy, which is then taken up by many other strands of Islam, uh, 12 Shi'ism uh, has absorbed Mu'tazili theology when it comes to the, the attributes of Allah. Uh, uh, Five Shi'ism, which is Zaydi Shi'ism, has also absorbed this. Uh, Ibadism, which is in Oman and other places, that also absorbed this. So all all of these schools will basically say, the Prophet did not say this, end of story. Okay, no way they're gonna accept that the Prophet said that Allah created Adam in his image. Now once again, to be technical here, we have to be fair. Uh, we are people of justice and truth. They are not rejecting the Prophet Sallallahu They're rejecting these narrations as having come from him. And there's a huge difference between the two. To reject 
something from the Prophet Sallallahu is frankly kufr. If you were to say, I don't care what the Prophet said, I'm gonna reject it, then you are rejecting Allah and His Messenger and you're not a Muslim. But these theologians and these trends, they are skeptical of the preservation of hadith and not of the uh, theoretical applicability of the hadith. They're skeptical that hadith has been preserved. And these trends are still around across the globe. Uh, you can call them Neo-Mu'tazilites. There are many famous uh, thinkers and they're very popular uh, across the uh, cultures and globe simply because frankly, uh, at one level they do appeal, at one level they do appeal to the uh, the mindset of many people uh, educated in, in the Western world. They appeal to that mindset and so there are very famous uh, speakers in Urdu, in Arabic and in English who are on this trend of being highly skeptical of hadith and taking, uh, and the, taking the preservation of hadith is not being something that is normative. That they're very, if it doesn't make sense, then we don't have to really worry about the isnad. These are Israeliyat, they're coming from Jewish and Christian sources. And of course, they will point out that this is literally uh, uh, almost word for word, it is um, biblical. God created man in his image, Khalaqallahu Adam ala suratihi. So that's their version. Now, me personally, and this is not this time to go into this, uh, this, this point here, that I am not a part of that trend. And I affirm uh, the book of Hadith and Sunnah, and I believe that uh, they have done an amazing job in preserving, uh, I mean obviously not every book of Hadith preserves, again that's an advanced topic, but overall the methodology of the scholars of Hadith has been uh, an amazing effort that has allowed us to sift through. And we have what is called غَلَبَةُ dhan, preponderance of the evidence. We have that, not certainty for every hadith, but we can be fairly certain uh, if the Prophet ﷺ said it or not. And because of this, obviously, I am uh, uh, affirming the mainstream Sunni models of hadith. And so, uh, according to those models, this hadith uh, is in Bukhari and in Muslim, and in Muslim Imam Ahmad, and in uh, uh, Abu Dawud. And so basically, it's in the majority of books of hadith. And the fact that it's in Bukhari and Muslim means it has been vetted by the highest standards. It's muttafaq alayh. So this is the highest standard. Allah created Adam in his image. Now. Uh, however, it might be in Bukhari and Muslim, but believe it or not, some of the early scholars of hadith actually did find this hadith problematic. And amongst them was none other than Imam Malik. Now remember, Imam Malik died 179, and that's two generations before Imam al-Bukhari. Imam al-Bukhari died 256. And between Bukhari and Imam Malik, there is a person. He doesn't narrate from Imam Malik directly. He's two generations after Imam Malik. So. Imam Malik, uh, you know, he's flourished 150 Hijrah, right? So he's, he's early on. Imam Malik actually would not narrate this hadith and he forbade people to narrate this hadith. He did not like this hadith. And his students later on interpreted this that he didn't want to cause fitna. He didn't want to cause confusion with this difficult hadith because people might get wrong thoughts or bizarre thoughts. And so Imam Malik did not uh, like narrating this hadith. Now, some have interpreted this to mean that he considered the hadith to be weak. And that is an interpretation that one can derive uh, from the text. Uh, and others have interpreted this to mean that no, he considered the hadith to be authentic, but he thought that this hadith is gonna confuse the people and is gonna give them ideas that are unbefitting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either case is that he felt uncomfortable uh, narrating these hadith uh, in public and it is not in his muatta by the way. This hadith is not in his uh, famous uh, muatta. So this is Imam Malik's uh, uh, philosophy or position about this particular uh, hadith. And in contrast to this, uh, Imam Ahmad for example was very blunt that this is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, and yes, Allah created man in his image, and we're going to accept it. And so Imam Ahmad has a different philosophy about these hadith, and some of those, uh, some of the modern followers of Imam Ahmad, uh, those that are on the Athari or the Salafi strand, so they have taken this hadith to be a very important hadith, so much so that entire treatises and a 400 page book or 350 page book in our times, literally uh, in our generation, has been written about this hadith and many famous ulama uh, wrote, uh, you know, approved of this book as we'll get to uh, inshallah in today's lecture. Now, uh, before we dive in deeper into this issue, we also have to mention that uh, one can also talk about this hadith from uh, a different perspective. So, to be, to be simplistic here, this hadith, Allah created Adam in his image. 
there are two different questions to ask ourselves. The first question is, who is being referenced when Allah says Allah created Adam in His image? Is the His a capital H? Allah created Adam in God's image. Or is the His a smaller H? Allah created Adam in His image, and then His refers to somebody else, not Adam. So this is the first question. Now, once we answer this question, once we answer this question, then if we say that the His is a capital H and refers to Allah, then we get to the second question, which is, how do we understand that Allah created Adam in Allah's image, okay? That's if we understand Allah created Adam in Allah's image, because we do have the option, as we're gonna see, of a number of scholars interpreting Allah created Adam in His with a small h. So, let us answer the first question, that what did our earlier scholars say about the meaning of this hadith? Who does the His uh, refer to? So we have actually three, uh, three opinions over here, three opinions over here. The first opinion is that Allah created Adam in His image uh, means the image of the one you are fighting and you're thinking of punching him. The Prophet is saying, do not punch, do not hit on the face, do not strike the face because that person you're striking, Allah created Adam in that image. It's as if you're striking your own father. This is the meaning of the hadith, okay? Because the hadith says that if one of you fights, let him avoid the face for Allah created Adam in his image. Meaning, the person you're fighting, he is a human being. And would you hit your father? No, so then avoid the face because that is a noble part of the body and the structure of the face, the, the form of the face, it is unique to mankind and Allah created your father and his father Adam in that image. So this is one uh, interpretation and uh, it is the interpretation of quite a number of our earlier uh, scholars. A second interpretation, which is very fairly common, fairly common, a second interpretation is that the his goes back to none other than our father Adam alayhi salam. Allah created Adam in the image of Adam. Allah created Adam in his form, his is Adam. So it doesn't go back to Allah. Now, by the way, both first and second interpretation, we don't have to then worry about the uh, attribute controversy because then we are saying this hadith is not related to the attributes of Allah. This hadith is describing Adam. So it's not uh, uh, in the realm of the problematic attributes. Allah has a hand, Allah has a face, Allah has uh, you know uh, uh, eyes. These are mentioned in the hadith, right? And we talked about different schools uh, uh, and how they interpreted them. Uh, and, and again, I mean, I've spoken about this in many different lectures. Uh, for, uh, for actually I have a Q&A on this as well on my channel, uh, what is the difference between Salafis and Ash'aris? I also have, when I talked about, uh, when I talked about the Day of Judgment, and I mentioned, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ Your Lord shall come on the Day of Judgment, I mentioned the different interpretations. Go listen to these uh, these lectures here, uh, there, and I'll also very briefly summarize in, in 10, 15 minutes as well, because this is not the goal to teach you different theologies right now, but you should be aware that uh, there are different ways of interpreting the attributes of Allah historically. And uh, as we said, there's three primary schools. As I said, I didn't go into them. I, I, I did not uh, go into a lot of detail. Uh, the Mu'tazila um, uh, negate that the Prophet even said it. Uh, the Sunni people of Kalam, these are the Ash'aris and the Maturidis, they would affirm if the hadith is authentic that the Prophet said it, but then they would say that, but you are interpreting it in a literal manner, in an anthropomorphic manner, and what is meant is uh, something that is figurative. So uh, when Allah says hand, He means the power, He doesn't mean a yad. You know, when Allah says ayn or, or eye, He means that Allah is looking, uh, the, the, the context is Allah is looking upon us, gazing upon us, and it doesn't mean that there's uh, an eye. And then of course you have the, uh, the Athari school, uh, Imam Ahmed is the one who, who's most famous for this, Ibn Taymiyyah as well. Uh, and they are the ones who said, any noun or verb or adjective that occurs in the Quran or Sunnah ascribed to Allah, we stick with it and we understand the linguistic meaning and we 
don't understand the modality. We don't understand the specifics of how, nor should our mind go there. So we affirm the word and we leave the modality to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the second group, which is the Ash'aris and the Maturidis, they affirm the word, but they say that, uh, the, they affirm the word exists, they say, they affirm, but they say that it cannot mean, it cannot mean what uh, you guys think it means. It cannot mean that Allah has an ayn or a yad, no, because Allah does not have body parts and Allah is the, uh, you know, uh, not a body or whatnot. And so obviously the hadith of Allah being uh, uh, creating Adam in his image, if the H is capital, then the Mu'tazila and the other groups are gonna, and the Athadis are gonna all have an interpretation. And if the H is small, then these three groups become irrelevant because now we're not worried about the, the issue of the attribute. So back to our uh, three, category, three, three opinions. Number one, it goes back to the one whose face it is. Now, this, this interpretation, by the way, does not uh, square up with both narrations of the hadith because there's two narrations of the hadith. The first of them uh, is in uh, Sahih Muslim that our Prophet Sallallahu said, when one of you fights, avoid the face because Allah created Adam in his face. Okay, maybe we understand this hadith refers to the person you're fighting. How about the other hadith which is in Bukhari and Muslim that Abu Huraira says خلق الله تعالى آدم على صورته طوله ستون ذراع Allah created Adam in his image and he was 60 cubits tall and when he created him he said go and say salam to the angel there is no fighting going on in that hadith there is no person that is being hit or the intention to hit in that hadith and the phrase is the same خلق الله آدم على صورته therefore this interpretation although it has been uh, it has been offered by a number of, of scholars of Kalam, in reality it doesn't hold up for the simple reason that the first hadith, which is actually the more well-known and the more uh, authentic as this in Bukhari and Muslim, has nothing to do with fighting. It is simply Allah created Adam in his image. So it cannot be in the image of the one fighting. So we now get to the second interpretation, which is actually, as I said, fairly common. And that is that his means Adam's image. And this is the default or standard position of many of the scholars of Kalam, including Ibn Hajar and Fakhradin al-Razi and al-Juwaini and al-Qurtubi and al-Sanusi, and these are all all famous scholars of the, uh, uh, the, the Sunni Kalam or the, uh, the Ash'ari and the Maturidi uh, Kalam. However, it is also found within Athari uh, strands as well. And there are a number of scholars, prominent dissenting voices who disagreed with the uh, other interpretation, which is number three, we're gonna come to that. And this group sided with position number two, right? And foremost amongst them was the great scholar of hadith, Ibn Khuzaymah. Ibn Khuzaymah died 311 Hijra, and he wrote a famous book, Sahih Ibn Khuzaymah, which is one of the four Sahih books. You have Bukhari, Muslim, Ibn Khuzaymah, Ibn Hibban. These are the four books of Sahih that were written, and Ibn Khuzaymah is considered number three of the Sahih after Bukhari and Muslim. And uh, he also wrote a book called Kitab al-Tawheed. And in that book, Kitab al-Tawheed, wa ithbat sifat al-Rabb, Kitab al-Tawheed is a book that is about Allah's attributes. And in that book, he mentions this hadith, and he says that, uh, that uh, and let, let me quote here, that عَلَى سُورَتِهِ خُلِقَ عَلَيْهَا لَا عَلَى مَا تَوَهَّمَ بَعْضُ مَنْ لَمْ يَتَحَرَّ الْعِلْمِ فَظَنَّ أَنَّ قَوْلَهُ الرَّحْمَانِ صِفَةٌ مِّنْ صِفَاتِ ذَاتِهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى And so he is saying, when Allah says, Allah created Adam in his image, when the Prophet said Allah created Adam in his image, he means in the image of Adam, not as some people who don't have knowledge assume that in the image of Ar-Rahman, no. Rather, Allah created Adam in the image of Adam. Now, uh, what does it mean Allah created Adam in, in the image of Adam? It is something that uh, Ibn Qutayb and others, they mentioned this, and um, uh, Ibn Hajar also mentions this in his commentary of Fath al-Bari. Uh, Ibn Hajar mentions this as well, he says, the point of this hadith is as follows. It's very simple and interesting. Allah created Adam fully formed in the image of a human being. Adam did not go through multiple phases. Adam did not come out as a baby and then become larger and larger and then go through teenager and puberty. No, Allah created Adam in his final form, perfect. 
That's what the hadith means. Khalaqallahu Adama ala suratihi. Allah created Adam in his image completely. When Allah said kun fayakun, Adam was already fully formed. That's the meaning of the hadith according to uh, so many ulama. And also in our times or in the generation before us, I mean the, our, the generation uh, two decades ago, the famous scholar of hadith, Shaykh Al Albani. Muhammad Nasir al-Albani, the famous scholar of hadith, he also was very strict in this interpretation, saying that uh, this is the interpretation of the hadith, Allah created man in the image of man. Allah created Adam in the image of Adam. This is the second interpretation. And it is well-known and famous interpretation. The third interpretation is the interpretation of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal uh, and those who followed uh, that interpretation of the sifat. They considered this hadith to be of the divine attributes hadith. And they were very forceful in rejecting uh, opinion number one and opinion number two. So much so that Imam Ahmad uh, uh, very harshly denounced anybody who had opinion number two as being somebody who's uh, deviated from the correct understanding. And he's subscribing to one of the extreme groups like the Jahmis or whatever, as Imam Ahmad is well known for saying on many uh, of, the, uh, of the issues that um, uh, of the attributes. He has a very hard line stance when it comes to the attributes issue. And Imam Ahmad, uh, uh, believed that Allah created man in his image. And he said that this is a honor to man and that we don't think too deeply about what the implications of that are. We simply affirm that Allah has a form or image. Allah has a surah. This is what Imam Ahmed said, that Allah has a surah, but his surah is not the surah that we understand. And that however, you know, Adam was created, that there is some in, his, in its own way, just like Allah, uh, uh, according to that interpretation of Islam, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face that is befitting him, and Allah has a hand that is befitting him. So too, they said Allah has a surah that is befitting. Now obviously, this type of speech, it completely goes against the second strand, which is the Ash'ari uh, and Maturidi. And of course, the first strand, the Mu'tazilites, would completely reject it. So again, this is not the time to get into all of these technical details. Uh, you have to understand these are bygone controversies uh, that have shaped uh, a thousand, a millennia of our history. And so much has been written. So I'm now talking about the issue of Adam, but we have to just introduce these other uh, controversies in this in this regard. So Imam Ahmed and others, uh, they mentioned as evidence, another version of this hadith. And that version is from Ibn Umar radiallahu uh, So the versions I quoted you are from Imam Ab Abu Huraira. There's another version from Ibn Umar radiallahu an, and that goes as follows that uh, Ibn Umar said that لا تقبح الوجه Do not uh, consider somebody's face to be ugly or do not curse the face. For Allah created Adam in the image of Ar-Rahman. خلق الله آدم على صورة Rahman. Now, this version doesn't have a pronoun. The previous version has a pronoun. Allah created Adam in His image. So now we can debate what does His mean. Ibn Umar's version doesn't have a pronoun. It has Allah created man, Allah created Adam in the image of Ar-Rahman. Khalas, there is no interpretation according to this version. However, as is always the case, some spice and salt is added. This version is highly contested. It is not found in the standard books of hadith. It is not found in Bukhari and Muslim and, uh, and, uh, and, and Muslim Imam Ahmad. It's actually found in the very tertiary works, um, um, uh, such as Rad uh, ala al-Bish al-Marisi and Darimi's book is also found in Tawarani's Kabir. So it's not found in the, the primary uh, books. Ibn Abi Asim Kitab al-Sunnah. So you find this narration uh, in the tertiary books. It's not found in the primary. And uh, frankly, uh, there's a lot of discussion whether it's authentic or not. And uh, I think it is not authentic in the first place. And also, by the way, Shaykh al-Albani, he has a, a number of pages discussing this hadith, this version. And he says that version is completely inauthentic. It is shad, it is inacceptable. The correct version is the Abu Huraira version, which is Allah created man in his image. And then Albani he said his means Adam's image. Allah created Adam in Adam's image. And that's the interpretation of Ibn Khuzayma. And it is the interpretation of basically majority of scholars, as we said, uh, of the uh, Sunni Kalam uh, strand. Now, uh, Imam Ahmad, as I said, 
and those who followed him. And that includes great luminaries like Ibn Taymiyyah, like Ibn Al-Qayyim. Uh, in our times, uh, <clears throat> uh, those that, you know, uh, the Salafi strand of Islam, the Athari strand of Islam, uh, the majority of them, uh, almost all of them, other than, you know, uh, Shaykh Al-Albani and his students, pretty much the rest of the strand in our times uh, has taken this to be one of the main uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have uh, uh, written many treatises uh, on this and they uh, have uh, quoted Imam Ahmad as Imam Ahmad said that we do not uh, explain what this means. We have no right to explain it. We simply leave it as it is in the uh, hadith. And uh, this is the position as well of uh, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah that he said Allah has a surah that befits him uh, just like he has a yad and a wajh that befits him and we don't think about this uh, too much. And they also mention a logical uh, uh, interpretation that why this interpretation makes sense. And they say the context of hitting somebody. خلق الله, is that, لا تضرب الوجه, don't hit the face because Allah created man in Allah's image, right? Now they say that why would, why would the face be forbidden if Allah created Adam with a face and this man with a face? Then why would the face be off limits? This is what the uh, notion is, that why mention this? Because in the end of the day, didn't Allah create Adam with two hands? So then we, if we're hitting somebody, we're pushing somebody, we're pushing him with the hand, right? Didn't Allah create Adam like he has created us? Yet it is only the face that is mentioned here. And so uh, if that is the case, then it seems to be that the face is something special. And so this group says that that speciality is that in some way, fashion or form, we don't think too deeply about it, that Allah Azza wa Jal has a surah and uh, Adam had a surah and Allah fashioned as the hadith says, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ آدَمَ عَلَىٰ سُورَتِهِ Now this uh, issue, as I said, became highly contentious again in our times, uh, meaning uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and there was back and forth between many uh, scholars and whatnot. And one of the uh, famous scholars of the movement by the name of Sheikh Hamoud al tawajiri He wrote an entire book, Aqeedatu Ahlil Iman Fi Khalqi Adam Ala Surat Ar-Rahman. The belief of the people of Iman that Allah created Adam in the image of Ar-Rahman. And this book uh, uh, was uh, highly uh, encouraged and many um, people wrote introductions, including the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Ibn Baz. He wrote an introduction where he praised the book and he said this is the correct uh, belief and whatnot. Uh, and then of course, other refutations followed and whatnot. Now, uh, I'm gonna you know, wind up with my own uh, thoughts over here and they mirror what I have said, what I have said uh, in this topic uh, for, other, uh, for other lectures and for other Q&A that I've done. And that is that, you know, these topics once upon a time were considered to be very hot topics and people genuinely got angry and considered other Muslims to be deviants and evil over these interpretations. And this shows us that controversies themselves are uh, waxing and waning, that controversies, they envelope a society and everybody becomes the talk of the town and then a century later nobody is even aware of this controversy. The only people who still make this a controversy are those who are taught the historical controversy in their madrasas and they come out and they then continue with these controversies inheriting the dogma that they have uh, learned from their teachers a thousand years ago. This controversy occurred 1,200 years, 1,100 years ago. It occurred literally a millennia ago. For the average Muslim, I guarantee, and you know this dear listeners, that the average Muslim is not concerned about what this hadith means. They, they accept it for as it is. And they're not worried about the implications. It doesn't affect their daily life at all. It doesn't even affect their iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their understanding of the worship of Allah. It is a bygone controversy. So I have held this position for the longest time and I continue to hold it. These controversies should not become modern controversies. Keep them in graduate seminars amongst advanced students of knowledge in closed rooms. Keep that alive that that happened in the year 300 Hijrah and the year 450 this happened. Go ahead and teach them because that's a part of our heritage. But it is a mistake of the highest magnitude for people 
involved in academic Islam to take these controversies and bring them up in front of the masses. And in fact, to be brutally honest, I sympathize with Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, who did not even like this hadith to become a topic of discussion. He just didn't, he understood what is the point? What is the point of the average Muslim getting involved? What does this hadith mean? Look, let's just leave it as it is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And frankly, uh, the second interpretation does make a lot of sense. And that's the interpretation of Ibn Khuzaim and others that Allah created Adam in the image of Adam. Allah did not uh, cause Adam to be born and grow up. No, Allah created Adam in final form. So even this, you know, the, the, the controversy is done. But even if you want to follow position number three or position number two, you know what? Follow it. No big deal. The most important thing, there's no need to create animosity or hatred or division. There is no deviancy of holding one of these positions. Dear Muslim, if you feel this way, then I think you're not looking at the broader picture. The, the broader picture is that we have far, far bigger issues to worry about. And I have said this in many gatherings that I'm at, that especially when people graduate from a particular school of theology uh, and they're now become adamant in that school, and they're debating people of the other school. I say to them, you know, you are debating over the attributes of God and your teenage children are debating over the existence of God. You're debating over the attributes and the next generation is talking about the existence of Allah. Where are you and where is the next generation? Keep these topics to those students and with hikmah, not that you teach students to hate others, but rather you derive historical lessons and you contextualize. And yes, it's important to know uh, the past, but these controversies are bygone and we should not resurrect them amongst the masses and have internet pages refuting this and doing that. Ya akhi, the average Muslim is struggling just to be a good Muslim, believe in Allah, pray five times a day. Let's leave the discourse at that level. And as I said, if you wanna study Islam full time, then learn to study these and put them in their historical perspective. And so in my humble opinion, this issue should not be an issue. It is a non-issue. It is something we discuss as a historical uh, uh, remnant of the past. It was something that caused some controversy. And you know, people have, in our times, there are far different controversies. They've enveloped us. Everybody's talking about this, you know? You know, realities of gender, and this becomes, everybody's talking about it. I, I assure you, within 100, 200 years, people are gonna be looking at this discussion as something antiquated. They would have moved on, moved on to something else, such as the way of you know history, such as the way of intellectual ideas. So for us to live in the past, and go back and talk about this sheikh said this and that sheikh said that and you must be deviant, you must be wrong. Subhanallah, Iman and Taqwa transcends your understanding of this hadith. It is possible you, you believe in position number two, position number three, and you're still righteous people worshiping Allah. And it's possible you believe in these positions and you're not a righteous person. So bottom line, I think that the second interpretation does make a lot of sense. Allah created Adam in the image of Adam, but even if you wish to go with position number three or position number two uh, based upon you know uh, uh, principles of kalam or whatnot, so be it. These are trends that have existed in the ummah for the last thousand something years, and we are not going to make any major issue about this, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, there is another topic, but uh, we have to now wind down here, uh, inshallah, but I will just briefly mention that the next issue we will be discussing is going to be uh, the uh, verses and the ahadith about the creation of our mother Hawa from our father Adam. That what is the information that we have about the creation of Hawa, our mother, and what was she created from? And is it true that she was created from a rib or something? These are things that are found uh, in our tradition. So how do we understand all of these? That will be inshallah ta'ala our topic for our next lecture. I wanted to just keep this about this one topic so that we keep our mind focused. Until that time, jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يا من أجبت دعاء نوح فانتصر وحملته في فلكك المشحون يا من أحال النار حول خليله روحا وريحانا بقولك كون